Peace, party people. Um, welcome back to uh, Where My Killer Tape at, episode number 62. Uh, we're going to talk about why black seed oil is bullshit. Uh, I'm going to talk to you also about uh, why I don't do bootlegs. I'm going to do a spoil free review of the movie Us by Jordan Peele. Spoil free, so it ain't going to give nothing away. Um, is Warren Buffett really happy? I'm going to talk about that. Um, I'm going to switch up the how to approach women thing. And somebody asked me a question, I'm going to answer that. Definitely. And I'm going to talk about self love. So check it out, party people. A one two, a one two, a one two, a one two. I like to introduce myself. I like to introduce myself. Yo, 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 For episode 62 of where my killer tape at, I got this from um, Trader Hose, uh, Palilonco, uh, Chief of Lions, Merlot Malbec. Um, it's actually really good. It's about, it's a 70% um, Merlot and a 30% Malbec. It's pretty, pretty dope. Um, I, I really liked it. Um, it wasn't too bitter. Um, and I it, it, and it went down really good. And it was actually pretty good. And I felt better afterwards because I guzzled this one down. So definitely, I appreciate you. Sh shout out to Trader Joe's host. <laughs> Real quick, man, and I should have done this before, and I haven't, and so I wasn't really paying attention, and I should be. Shout out to Rosby of the B2K group, the group B2K. Um, they aren't they on a tour right now, a reunion tour, and last week he talked about how he didn't feel safe being on that tour, and much of it has to do with his former manager Chris Stokes, who who sexually abused him years and years ago. And I think what's fucked up is that. One, number one, like his label mates are kind of like, you know, his group mates are kind of like not really supporting him on it, which is which is a tough thing because we all know that they're doing the reunion tour because, you know, it's clearly that they need money and his decision kind of like kind of messes with their money, which is not which is I'm not trying to justify it, not to give an excuse. I just feel like it's fucked up that his friends are not there for him. Um, and another thing that irks me is that a lot of men like we always talk about how when we talk about rape culture, we never talk about boys and men who are raped. And here's an opportunity for us to be vocal about it. And we don't want to be vocal about it. And I think I think that shit is fucked up. I think that we should rethink that shit um, and really start talking about it, man. My heart goes out to Roz B because he feels unsafe in his tour. He's going to continue on the tour despite what's going. I'm hearing words now that, you know, news now that are just rumors that he might just be skipping the tour altogether. Um, you know, he's beefed up his personal security. But I just kind of feel like, damn, where's the fucking support? You know what I mean? Like, we always talk shit. We cast like women about this shit all the time. But when, when, when we, you know, when it comes out, we don't really step up. And, you know, as a, a, a father of boys, as a, an educator of black boys, um, this shit really hurts me. And it, and it gets close to home, man. So let's really, yo, shout out to Roz B for that, man, for real. <laughs> I got to talk to you about black seed oil because I know like the last year, two years, really, yeah, two years, people have been saying, oh, you should try black seed oil to take care of that, take care of this, take care of that. And you know, this is how you know some shit is a scam. This is how you know because you go to buy this shit and then it's like, it's mad expensive. So I went to one place that shall not be named and they wanted $16 for four ounces of that joint. And they was like, oh, because it's pure cold press, 100% pure cold press, man. Let me just say this, man, first of all. And I shouldn't have fell for the okie doke. Um, they say that it takes care of things like everything from acne to weight loss. It prevents tumors, et cetera, et cetera. And that people have been using it for thousands of years. Um, that is all not true. That is all not true. 
Um, and, and, and let me say this. You can tell that people are just really marketing it because, you know, they're going to tell you stuff that is like 100% cold press. I've seen one that was like even more expensive where they were like, oh, it's more expensive because it's um, they didn't use any pesticides and stuff like that. So, and, and, and there are some dangers in pesticides. I will admit to that. But when people put that on labels, they just it's just a marketing thing. And that's just how capitalism works. So um, don't do it. Again, unless you could prove, show me studies that prove that it prevents those things, then, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll retract this. I'll come back out and do another segment. But just be careful, man, out there, man, because people are going to try to sell you stuff. And and they really just want to separate you from your money, man. Word is bomb. There's no, again, there's no, I should have put this in the health segment. There's no one cure-all. You know what I mean? Chill. <laughs> I had this discussion um, with someone the other day, and they asked me, um, the question was specifically, do I believe that Warren Buffett, the billionaire, if he was happy? And then there's always this idea that rich people are unhappy. I, and I, I, you know what I'm saying? I'm not rich, so I don't know. And it's easy for me to be like, well, they got money. You know what I mean? And true indeed, money, money care about happiness. This, this is what I say. I'd be like, yeah, money care about happiness. But it sure makes shit easier. You know what I mean? Like, trust me, a million dollars would do me very well right now. Um, you know, a million dollars would take me out of debt right now, like out of big debt, right? So, but we had this idea that that rich people are miserable and poor people are, are happy because they don't, you know, like, get the fuck out of here, man. That's some, that's some wild shit to say. But anyway, my answer to him was, hell yeah, he's fucking happy. He's a rich white man. Rich white people, rich, rich white men are fucking happy as shit. You know what I mean? Like, they got all that shit going for them. So they happy as shit. So yeah, that's that was my answer to that. You know what I mean? So yesterday, me and the family and a bunch of members of our crew went to see um, the Us movie. Uh, directed and produced by Jordan Peele. And written by Jordan Peele. Um, highly recommend it. And this is a... Uh, this is a uh, spoiler-free review. This is a spoiler-free review. And the way you can tell it's a spoiler-free review is because it's going to be short. Um, number one, if you are planning to be a director or a producer or a cinematographer or a director of photography, I highly recommend this movie. I think Jordan Peele does a great job of using angles and music to really like set the tone of the movie. And I think that's really dope. And I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm not like a really, I'm not a big horror fan. Like I, I, I do love horror movies. I'm just not a big fan of it. And I'm not into the like the torture porn. I'm not into those kind of things. Um, and like, I'm not really into slasher flicks. You know, um, I'm more into the psychological thriller. Um, that's why joints like um, Netflix is um, um, the house, the, the, the haunting of House Hill. Like, I love that. I really love that. Um, and, and what I like about Jordan Peele in this movie, because in, in The Haunting of House Hill, everything is filmed like with uh, in, everything's filmed, in, you know, with really dark lighting. And then like they'll use like tents uh, to really set the tone of a scene. And Jordan Peele in this movie, what he does, he kind of does the same thing. He uses uh, he doesn't use a lot of darkness, but he uses a lot of dark lighting. He uses a lot of tents to set the tone of what's going to happen. Um, it, it does get bloody. But what I like is that he really tones down the violence. Um, like, I mean, let me, let me rephrase that. He mutes the violence. So you see blood, but oftentimes you don't actually see like the actual cutting or slashing. And I think, I think that's dope. It's a psychological thriller. And I will say this. This is a movie that you have to pay attention to. Don't get me wrong. Um, like when I went to see uh, his first movie, um, Get Out, I, I was in a, a theater full of people that were actually like, really involved with what was going on. So I recommend seeing this in a movie theater um, because it, when, I, when we saw his first movie, there was like a lot of fellowship involved there. We were all like yelling at the screen, watch out, watch out, watch out, you know. Um, but in this one, um, there was a little bit of that, like, hey, watch out, you know, be careful, or oh, you're crazy, you're tripping, you know, bitch, get out the way, like all that stuff. But there was a, the dialogue is what I love about this movie. And you got to pay attention to the dialogue. You really got to pay attention to the dialogue. If you don't, you're going to miss a lot of stuff. So it's a, it's a, it's a slow burn, though. Um, you have to watch it in its entirety. You cannot, like, 
You cannot like watch it and then go to the bathroom for 10 minutes. Cause if you do, you're going to come back and you will be lost. So you have to really watch it and you really got to pay attention. So, um, if you're not into that kind of horror film, it might not be your bag, but I recommend going to see it. I really do. I really recommend going to see it. Um, again, I know that there's other horror movies that do the same thing. Um, I haven't seen them again. That's not a genre that I'm really into. Um, but I think, and so, so the reason why I say that is cause I don't want to sound like, oh, Jordan Peele was the first person to do this and he's going to do it. He's a man. Um, I, no, I'm not saying that at all. I just haven't seen that happen often because I'm, that's not the genre that I watch. So I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but I really think that like, I, I felt like I should have came there with a notebook, um, and taking notes. But other than that, it's a dope movie. Highly recommend it. It's dope to see a dark skinned family, like a dark skinned family. Um, on sc on screen and also Lupita Nyong'o does an amazing fucking job like if she doesn't get nominated for something I don't know and I, and I can't say I can't tell you why I'm just saying that her acting is really like I I'm hoping that this movie propels her to get more starring roles because she really she really holds it down like she really carries this movie and I thought that was really dope so shout out to Jordan Peele for that it's a dope movie uh, it's a lot of layers to it so I gotta go back and watch it um, but I, I thought it was dope. Work. Alright, man. I'm not trying to knock nobody's hustle. Um, but I don't do bootlegs. I don't do movie bootlegs. And here's here's why, man. Like, because you got all these movie blockbusters that come out, particularly the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you know, those kind of things, man. You got to see that stuff in the movie theater, man. Like, for real, for real. Like, you know, like Avengers, Infinity War, you know, Black Panther. If you didn't see that in the movie theater, I really think you miss, you're missing out on that, man. Because those movie theaters are built for that, man. You you know, unless you're a millionaire and you can build your own little movie theater, you're not going to find that same experience that you do when you go to a big screen. I just, you know, um, say what you say about movies. Like, I don't buy, like, I'm not going to lie. When I go to movies, I sneak in food because, you know, movie food sucks. Movie theaters food sucks, so... But I don't do bootlegs for that. Also, I mean, I mean, even like, for example, I talked about this in, in my little mini review of us. When we went to see um, Get Out, like if you didn't see it in the theater with, with, with other people that were like involved in the dialogue and the action, you're really missing out on that experience. I'm for real, for real. Like what made Get Out to me really dope was that all of us was in there like, oh, get out the way, all that stuff. Like, you know, like. And these are with strangers, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I don't think I don't think you can have that just watching it on bootleg and watching it in your living room. You know what I mean? Don't get me wrong, I binge watch stuff on Netflix all the time, but that stuff is built for Netflix. Anything else, like you gotta watch it. So that's why I really don't do bootleg. Again, I'm not trying to knock nobody hustle. If that's how you eat, that's how you eat. You know what I'm saying? I might, I might get in trouble for that, but hey, you know, I'm not bootlegging and shit, so I'm good. So that's just my take on it. Work. <laughs> Let's let's talk about self love for a minute. Uh, shout out to Mr. Creates who who stays on me about wanting me to discuss it on my um my podcast. And, and she last time we talked, you know, she didn't say put this on your podcast, but she asked me some questions that I was like, I had to sit down and think about it. And I was like, you know what, I'm gonna discuss it on my podcast. And I wanted she said something to me, but she she DM me something that was that made me really think because she was like, you, a while ago she was like, you should talk about it on your podcast. And I was like, no, because I'm not an expert in self-love. I'm still learning it. But she pointed out that then that's why you need to discuss it. You know what I'm saying? Um, because it is a process. It is. Self-love is a process and it's an ongoing process. And it's not something that you can do overnight and then become an expert on it. And I think that is so true. So um, the next couple of segments, I'm going to talk about this question that she asked me. Well, she asked me a series of questions and I'm going to go ahead and attempt to answer them. Because uh, I had to sit down and think about them. I really, really, really do. So, here we go. Bear with me, party people. So, um, the homie asked me, um, what is an aspect of yourself that you find challenging to love? Man, that's a good question. Um, and then she asks, do you love it now? Um, and then there's a third part of, if not, what are you doing to to reach the lo that loving part of yourself? And I'm going to just be honest. And, and it's funny because I'm still wrestling with this answer 
because I don't want to sound conceited. But I think a lot of us do this, right? A lot of us diminish ourselves for whatever reason, for whatever ever reason. Anyway, my brilliance, like I'm a brilliant motherfucker. Like I really am. And 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 that took me decades to realize. You know what I mean? Even though, even though I got the resume, even though, you know what I mean, there's proof, there's proof in the pudding, you know what I mean? That I'm a brilliant motherfucker, that I push shit together, that I get it in. Um, and usually at the drop of a dime, I do it. You know what I'm saying? I've been in situations where I was thrown into something and that shit came out lovely. Uh, and, but I never gave myself credit for it. That's a part of myself that I never really learned to love. And I need to do that because because of that, I have lost opportunities um, that I could have gotten because I felt I wasn't good enough. And I know I talked about this before about the imposter syndrome. So um, do I love it now? That part of my brilliance? I'm learning how to love it. I don't want to say yes fully to it. I don't want to be like, yeah, I'm there because I'm not because I, I end up I end up like I talked about this before where in my medium articles and I'll post a link to that where I backslide, where I, I'll do it for like a week or two. And then I just go back to how it was before that. And again, it's a process. Self-love is a process. And I have to realize that um, what am I doing to reach that kind of love? Really, first, um, the first thing I did was recognize it, recognize that I'm brilliant. Um, but then now I need to learn how to sell myself. I need to learn how to say, hey, you know, not and not in an arrogant manner, right? But just let people know that, hey, I have a particular expertise in a particular field and I'm good at what I am do. And you should hire me or you should book me for that. Like I should really do that instead of saying, ah, oh, you know, I'm all right. And, you know, or not bringing that up. So that's something that I have to do because, again, self-love is not only just admitting that you love yourself, but also proving to yourself that you love yourself. And I know that sounds crazy. And the example that the analogy that I use is if you're if you're in an intimate relationship with someone, you could say all day that you love them. But if you're not doing the acts that prove that you love them, then you might as well just be paying lip service. Right. So it's the same thing there. So I hope that answers the question that you was looking for. I hope it answers the question that the part of me that I don't love is is my brilliance. <laughs>talk about health again like we usually do here and where my killer tape at and i just want to say um I, and i'm guilty of this right like when people ask me for health advice I'm, I'm good at telling you what's good for me you know what i'm saying i know my body um i know how i get down i know my my limits you know what i'm saying i know my strengths um i know how long i can last etc etc that being said my advice might not be good for you you know what i'm saying like you know, somebody come up to me and say, hey, you know, I need to do this. And I'm, I could tell them this is what worked for me, um, but that might not work for you. Um, and what I'm and what I'm learning is that when it comes to health and the health industry, they have like this one size fits all. And I think that that's not I'm not saying it's harmful, but I don't think it's helpful. I don't think that like, you know, and I've seen people do certain techniques and, and um, uh, train a particular way. And not get the results that they wanted, not because they working they were working hard enough, was it because it just really didn't fit them? And I've always been an advocate for um, find something you like to do and do it, because then that way it won't be work. You know what I'm saying? So I do capoeira, I do break dancing because I love doing it. So training and working out using those two things has worked for me. You know what I mean? Like it really has. Now, are there some pieces of advice that that? One side said, oh, yes, there is. Um, we know that watching your portions and exercising regularly is a great idea for optimum health, right? Or just for the bare minimums. That's true indeed. Anybody anybody can tell you that, right? Um, and then I always say that there's no mag one magic bullet. There's no one thing you're going to do that's going to make you um, look like or feel like the person you want to see. And the key word, the key phrase is feel like the person you want to you want to feel like the person you want to feel like, right? So, um, I can go on and on about this. This is that, and I'm guilty of it. I'm just letting y'all know I'm guilty of saying, hey, do this. Hey, do that. Hey, do this when um, and that might not work for you. So um, that's going to ask some of us to do some research, some of us to put in work and really look at ourselves and really know, because, you know, again, you know your body. You know your body better than anybody else. What do you like? What feels, what, and, and you know, it's, it's going to be a lot of pain, right? We all know that. But what actually makes you um, you and what what is it that you like that makes you feel like you, you're doing something that's fulfilling 
And I know we can't always find that answer, but that's going to take some work. So for, the, for this, this health segment, I just wanted to talk about that word. For this episode, we're not going to have a uh, how to approach women, but I, I, somebody did ask me for some advice. Um, actually, someone DM'd my um, the Omi's podcast Twitter, which I didn't think people followed that. <laughs> but I got a DM asking questions, and he also asked to remain anonymous. And the question was, how do you meet uh, entrepreneurs, you know, socially, like, you know, to get romantically involved with them, to date, date them? Um, and I should be reading the question verbatim, and I'm not. But it's a good question. Um, I think it's dope. And, I, and what I like about it is that um, – I know that, what was the name of that book? Um, there's a book um, by Malcolm Gladwell, and he talks a little bit about that, about how sometimes we have an issue, like, when it comes to well, when our social and then, like, our business contacts, like, where they, where they meet at and what we can and cannot do. And I think this question is going to kind of pertain to that. They, this person wanted to know um, how to meet, uh, you know, how to date and meet business entrepreneurs. I'm going to say this, first of all. Um, and that's because the circle of people that I hang out with, they all come from different walks of life. I have academics, business professionals, business entrepreneurs. Um, that's crazy about business entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs, um, activists, um, politicians, like the people that I hang out with, they all come from different walks of life, academics, et cetera, et cetera. So those are the circle of friends that I hang out with. Um, so for me to meet, like to just to meet someone as a friend, there's not a problem for me to find someone who has a different walk of life. It's just not hard for me. But I know there's some people that they stay busy, so a lot of times they don't have time to meet friends. Um, I, I'm going to say this with with the internet, it's kind of real easy to find circles. I remember when I first when we first moved to Dayton, um, and I'm and I'm an atheist, but and I found an organization, Free Thought Dayton. Shout out to Free Thought Dayton that was a group of people who were atheists and agnostics, and allowed me to hang out with people with that who, with the like-minded ways. So, and then I also met a hiking group because I like to hike. And um and I got a chance to meet people there. Now I'm and there were people in there that dated, which was pretty cool. You know, you could find people there and they dated each other, and that was pretty cool. Um, only times that I didn't work was when yeah, they fell out. They kind of kind of stopped hanging out with us and stuff like that. So you have to worry about that. But I think what you need to do is you need to find that social group. So if you're an entrepreneur, I'm pretty sure there's entrepreneurial groups in your area that just hang out to share contacts or resources. And I know some people say you shouldn't mix business and pleasure. But I'm going to say this, like, and, and I know, like, people trip when I say stuff like this, like, and I talked about this before, that, like, people you work with, particularly, like, regular nine to fives, like, you spend more time with them than your family. Think about that. You spend 40 hours a week with these people, um, and sometimes there's going to be romance involved. You just can't help it. So if you're in a group and you meet someone, like, let's say, for example, I was in a hiking group, and I meet someone, and um, they, you know, and I'm attracted to them, why not? You know what I'm saying? I should be careful though, because you know it could it could affect the group entirely. But then again, we're adults, and we have to understand. And I think once we see that, it'll be much better for us. But I'm trying to answer your question. I think if you could find a group online or offline that meets together and hangs out with, I know there's some places that have like wine socials for people who are entrepreneurs. You know, um, and, and you know that's where you can meet people. Again, you got to be careful. But I think you know we're all adults here, and I think if we're honest and forthcoming about what we're looking for, it shouldn't be a problem. Uh, but then you also have groups online that you can meet that can help you meet people like that too. So I think like if you go to, I, I haven't been to a dating site, but I'm, I'm assuming that you can put on what you like and don't like what you're looking for and those people will find you. So those are just two ideas. If anybody else has any suggestions, please let me know and I'll talk about it in my next one. Thank you and I hope this helps. Episode 62 of Where My Killer Tape At. Here are the shout outs, and here they go. Shout out to the homie Seku. Um, again, he, he started back up his Fly Guys podcast. Um, I missed last week's. He got me coming up in this week. So, as soon as that gets done, I make sure that y'all hear, hear, hear it. Um, it's going to be a dope discussion on toxic masculinity. Um, shout out to Adrian Marie Brown, the author of Emergent Strategy. She just released another book uh, called Pleasure Activism, which I really want to get into, but my book club is doing her Emergent Strategy right now, which is a dope book. 
And finally, to Airship Ashanti, a steampunk um, organization out of Cincinnati, Ohio. And I'm going to put all the information in the show notes for the International Steam, Steampunk Symposium they got coming up uh, this this weekend coming up in, in Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, I'll put all the information up there. Any information for my workshop, um, I'm going to be doing a couple of workshop there. So shout out to all of y'all. Word. Yeah. 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 yeah I think, I think Prince there you have it party people episode 62 of where my killer tape at thank y'all for listening again um if you want some advice you can always hit me up at uh dantrezomi at gmail um d-a-n-t-r-e-s-o-m-i and make sure in the subject line you put advice and then um if you want to book me for any kind of workshops got boy i be boying Discussion of masculinity, whatever, fem- feminism, black male feminism, let me know. Um, again, Dan Trezomi at Gmail and in the subject column put bookings. Um, if you just want to hit me up, um, you can hit me up on Twitters at Dan Trezomi, D-A-N-T-R-E-S-O-M-I, or on the official um, Twitter page for where my killer tape at, which is at Omi's Podcast. Um, do that for me. Word is born. Um, I appreciate y'all for that. All the information will be in the show notes. Until next time, Excelsior! Bye.